Today's lesson is called the Black Poodle. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeff. My name is Roger, and in today's program, we're going to be talking about dogs. But、uh, well, we're not really talking about dogs per se. We're actually talking about a particular dog, the Black Poodle. This is a short story that we're going to summarize for the month of June. Here, it's our story for the month, and it's an old story. I believe it was published back in 1884 by a British author, an English author, by the name of F. Ansty. So that's what we're going to be talking about today: the Black Poodle. So let's summarize our story for today. Let's listen to the first part right now. The Black Poodle. In the villa next to mine, there lived a family: Colonel Curry, his wife, and their niece Lillian. The Currys often invited me over to spend the afternoon. Eventually, I fell in love with Lillian, who seemed to understand my feelings for her. This gave me courage to look forward to a day when I could declare my love to her. Hello, in the description we see the word poodle. This word is a noun, meaning a pet poodle. For example, my friend Daisy has had a miniature poodle for two years. My friend Daisy has had a miniature poodle for two years. Next, we see the word villa, meaning a 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 villa. 例如 ，there are villas that are available for rent near the lake. 湖边有度假别墅可供出租。再来，我们看到单字 colonel， 这个字是名词，指陆军、空军或海军陆战队的上校。举例来说 ，the colonel ordered the soldiers to move their camp. 上校命令士兵们挪移营地。或是 ，my grandfather was a colonel in the army during World War II. 我祖父是二战期间军中的上校。All right, everyone. The name of our story is the Black Poodle. By the way, yes, a poodle is a type of dog. Usually, it's a dog that has special curly hair that can be styled and stuff like that. Yes, very often, if you see a dog with very strange hair that has been clipped in such a way that they look extremely cute, that might just be a poodle. Yeah, poodles come in all shapes and sizes. Some are small, some are large. But one thing's for certain. Poodles are cute. They're meant to be cute. Okay, let's go ahead and focus on the black poodle. Let's get started. The first sentence of our story says, "In the villa next to mine, there lived a family: Colonel Curry, his wife, and their niece Lillian." Okay, so this is a villa, which is a very large. House basically, it's kind of like a mansion, and it's got a lot of land around it and things like that. So anybody who lives in a villa is going to be pretty influential, pretty powerful, pretty famous, and pretty rich. So yes, there's a, a villa there next to the narrator where he lives, and there lived a family. Okay, so here's the family. We've got Colonel Curry and his wife and their niece Lily, and it's not their daughter; it's their niece. And the niece there, like the nephew, would be the child of someone's brother or sister. Now it says here that there is a family, and apparently this is a military family because at the head of the household there you've got Colonel Curry. Yeah, I believe if you were saying this in French, you could say Colonel. Okay, but in English we say Colonel, even though it is spelled C O L O. N E L Colonel, and yes, when you're talking about a colonel, you're talking about a high-ranking officer in the military. Yeah, colonel is just one step below general. So we've got Colonel Curry here, and his beloved wife, and their niece Lillian. Now, the Currys often invited me over to spend the afternoon. So hey, why don't you come over here? We've got a nice villa. We're not snobby. We're generous. You're our neighbor. Come on over. We'll fix you some drinks. Maybe you can have a little afternoon tea or something like that, and we'll have a nice discussion about something about、uh, politics or whatever. 
so they can spend the afternoon together. And eventually, I fell in love with Lillian, who seemed to understand my feelings for her. So this is being narrated by the man. He、uh, noticed Lillian there. You know, she's a quite an attractive girl there, and of course, it was only natural that he would fall in love with her and want to spend the rest of his life with her. Yeah, he spent enough time with this family there that, yeah, he just. Fell madly in love with Lillian. Now, get this, okay? He fell in love with Lillian, and she seemed to understand his feelings for her. And apparently, this gave him, and this is what the author says next. This gave me courage to look forward to a day when I could declare my love to her. Now, here we have the word declare. Okay, if you declare something, you say that thing. Out loud in public—that's usually what a declaration is all about. If you declare something, you say that thing publicly because you want other people to hear it. So, if this person declares their love in public, he says, "I love you. I'm madly in love with you." So on, so forth. That's what it means to declare something. Now, you can also be walking through the airport, and at customs, they might say, "Do you have anything to declare?" I.e., is there anything? You want to tell us about? Are you bringing anything into this country that we should know about? Yeah, many years ago, I declared that I had bought a camera in Taiwan, and they said, "Well, you're going to have to pay a duty for that camera." And later on, I realized, gee, lots of people buy cameras in Taiwan, and they don't declare it when they cross the customs there when they go into the United States. So maybe I shouldn't have done that, but I was an honest boy, and I declared that I had bought a camera in Taiwan, and I had to. Pay a duty for it, but、uh, we're not talking about crossing into other countries here. We're talking about letting someone know your feelings about them. You're declaring your love for that person. You could declare your love for that person personally, one to one, or you could let other people know as well. He could be telling the colonel, "Hey, I love your niece, and I'd like to, you know, date her and maybe marry her someday." There you go. But something is getting in the way. Okay. When we come back from a short break, we're gonna learn that this guy he really wants to tell Lillian that he loves her, but something is standing in the way. And guess what it is? The black poodle. All right, folks. With that, it's time for us to take a short break. But don't go away. We'll be back soon. One obstacle, however, stood in my way, and that was Bingo. That giant black poodle was the family's pride and joy, and the center of their attention. But Bingo hated me and lost no opportunity to show it with growls and bites. 第二部分，我们看到名词 obstacle， 指障碍、阻碍。例如 ，I had to make a sharp turn in order to avoid an obstacle on the bike path. 我必须紧急转弯，好避开单车道上的障碍物。或是 Jan overcame many obstacles on her way to success. Jane 的成功道路上克服了许多阻碍。另外，补充一个相关名词 barrier, b a r r i e r, barrier 指障碍、藩篱、阻碍。像是 foreigners coming to Taiwan must learn to deal with the language barrier. 来台湾的外国人必须学习克服语言障碍。Okay, so remember, in the first part, we have the narrator here, and he was invited over to the Currys to spend the afternoon, and he eventually fell in love with Lillian, who is their niece, and he was going to declare his love for her. Sounds pretty straightforward. All we have to have is the approval from Lillian's parents or her uncle and aunt or whatever. But there was one obstacle that stood in his way, and. And that was bingo. One way or another, yes, bingo is an obstacle. By the way, here an obstacle is something that gets in your way. Now it can be something that literally gets in your way, like a wall or a fence or a gate or something like that. Or it can be more of a figurative thing that gets in the way. So when this kid comes over, he sees Lillian. 
Yeah, he wants to say that, oh, I love you, Lillian. He wants to say this, but the dog is always getting in the way somehow. He might not be standing in this person's path or anything like that, but he's making it really difficult to declare love. Or I should say this dog is making it very difficult to declare his love for Lillian. Yes, this is what the narrator of our story is talking about. Maybe he's not necessarily the author, but one way or another, he is telling the story story from a first person perspective. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the next sentence. Okay, bingo is in the way that giant black poodle was the family's pride and joy and the center of their attention. So there you go. If you don't like bingo, that's bad. And if bingo doesn't like you, that's bad too, because bingo, this giant big black poodle was the family's pride and joy. So the pride and joy of someone is the thing that they're very proud of, and they love that thing greatly. And you better not say mean things about that thing, because they will kick you out, and they will never want to talk to you again. Yep, this poodle is loved dearly by everybody in this family, but, get this, but Bingo hated me, says our narrator, and lost no opportunity to show it with growls and bites. Oh, no. So, yes, getting this dog's approval apparently is very, very important, and our narrator does not have it. Apparently, Bingo hates our narrator and yes shows it all the time by growling at this person and also biting them yep lost no opportunity to do something that means the dog took every opportunity or it took every chance that it had to show that the dog hated me hated the narrator here so it lost no opportunity every chance it had it would show it hated me with its growls and its bites the dog dog actually bit this guy that's terrible and also growled at him that's the sound that a dog makes when it growls okay you can also call it a growl that's a sound a dog makes when it's not happy with you when it feels slightly aggressive or threatened. It's a bit of a scary sound, but it's not a bark, okay? A bark is when a dog is kind of talking to you, okay? Ruff, ruff, ruff. That's a bark, whereas a growl, that's a different sound. It might not be as loud as a bark. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a short break, but when we come back, we will wrap up the first part of our story here, the story called The Black Poodle. Then the terrible event, which began thus, happened. Every evening, cats in my neighborhood would gather in my garden and make so much noise that it was impossible to fall asleep. Therefore, I decided to eliminate them with an air gun. One evening, as soon as I spotted a dark figure moving in the bushes, I pulled the trigger. Going toward the figure for a closer inspection, I discovered to my horror that I had killed not a cat, but the curry's beloved bingo. I thought about telling them what I'd done, but for fear of losing Lillian, I couldn't bring myself to confess. Instead, I buried Bingo in my garden. The police are investigating who pulled the trigger. 警方正在调查是谁开枪。或是, if you want to quit smoking, you should learn the triggers that cause you to smoke. 若你想戒烟, 可以试着厘清引发你想抽烟的原因。另外,这个字也可以当动词,指触发,引起。像是, we were woken up when our security alarm was triggered by a squirrel. 当松鼠触动警铃时, 我们从睡梦中惊醒。或是, the earthquake triggered a landslide. 那场地震引发了土石流。最后,我们看到片语。for fear of 加名词或动词ing 表示生怕点点点唯恐点点点例如 for fear of getting caught the criminal ran away from the crime scene 嫌犯因为怕被逮到而逃离犯罪现场另外补充一个同意片语 in case of 加名词或动词ing 我们可以说 in case of fire please use the stairs instead of the elevator 万应火灾发生,请使用楼梯,不要搭电梯。
Okay, so far we have the narrator. He's in love with the niece, and he wants to declare his love for her. But there's one obstacle in the way. Their giant black poodle. The poodle hates the narrator and loses no opportunity to growl and bite. Well, then the terrible event which began thus happened. So then, then after that, the terrible event. Happened, which began thus. It happened like this. Thus means it happened like I'm going to say in the next couple of sentences. He's going to explain the terrible event. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into things. Every evening, cats in my neighborhood would gather in my garden and make so much noise that it was impossible to fall asleep. Therefore, the narrator continues. Therefore, I decided to. Eliminate them with an air gun! Oh my goodness! Now, I was kind of rooting for the narrator before now, but he wants to go out and kill these cats with an air gun. That sounds terrible. By the way, if you do eliminate something like a cat with a gun, you shoot that thing with the gun in order to really hurt it or to. Kill it. So here, the narrator, he's kind of lost me here. I'm not rooting for him anymore. How can you be a nice guy and still go out and kill cats at night? That sounds terrible to me.、Hmm. Anyways, one evening, as soon as I spotted a dark figure moving in the bushes, I pulled the trigger. I.e., the narrator fired the gun at this image, this dark figure that he saw moving in the bushes. Yeah, pulled the trigger. The trigger, of course, is the device on a gun. That fires the bullet. So when you pull the trigger, you fire the gun. So he saw this figure moving in the bushes, and hey, that must be a cat. So let me pull the trigger and kill it, eliminate it, get rid of it. And going toward the figure for a closer inspection, I discovered to my horror that I had killed not a cat. But the curry's beloved bingo! Oh no! He killed their pride and joy. When they find out the dog is dead, they are going to be really, really depressed. So he discovered this to his horror. When you say that, it just means I was horrified to see. I was really scared. I was really terrified to find out that I had killed the poodle and not the cat. You would say this. Yes, I discovered something. Let's say to my. Horror. Anyways, inspection. Okay, when you do an inspection, you examine something. So here, he shot the gun, and then he went and he kind of investigated, took a look around. He went in for a closer inspection and found out that he had killed Bingo. Oh no! Now, next, the narrator says, "I thought about telling them what I'd done, but for fear of losing Lillian, I couldn't bring myself to confess. Instead." I buried Bingo in my garden. Anyways, he didn't say a thing. Okay, he didn't want to lose Lillian, so he buried the dog instead. He said nothing to Lillian's family. Yes, he did this for fear of losing Lillian, or because he did not want to lose Lillian. He did not want to risk losing Lillian. He was afraid that he would lose her, so he could not muster the courage. He couldn't be brave. Enough. He couldn't bring himself to confess. If you confess, of course, you admit that you've done something wrong. Confess your crimes, and then you'll go to jail or whatever. So here, he could not confess his crime. Instead, I buried Bingo in my garden. So maybe, hopefully, they won't find out. They'll just think that Bingo ran away, and I'll still be able to be together with Lillian. Nobody has to know. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation for today. Let's now listen to our Chinese teacher. Hello, 同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点。课文第三部分有一个句子写到 ：Going toward the figure for a closer inspection, I discovered to my horror that I had killed not a cat but the curry's beloved. 
bingo. 这个句子它用到 not a but b 的句型 Not a but b 表示不是 a 而是 b. 那是用来连接两个对等的结构 A 和 b 词性必须相同例如 His goal is not to win the game, but to break his own record. 他的目标不是要赢得比赛，而是要打破自己的记录。那句子里面，我们就是用 to win the game 和 to break his own record 这样对等的结构，都是不定词片语。好，那么另外，如果是用 not a but b 来当主词，那么后面的动词要配合主词 b 来做变化哦。比如 ，not Anna but her parents are going to the event， 不是 Anna， 而是她爸妈要去参加那个活动。那句子里面的 be 动动词就是配合最靠近的主词 her parents， 所以我们是用 are， 不是用 is。好，那么另外句子里面有一个单词是 inspection， 它是来自动词 inspect。我们来学它的字首字根。好，这个字根 spect。S P E C T 或是拼作 S P E C， 它有看、看见或是查看的意思。那么在 inspect 这个字当中，它的字首 in 表示往内 ，spect 表示看。那么合在一起，往里面仔细的看，应该就可以联想到 inspect， 它有检视、检验或是审查的意思。通常是指为了要找出是否有错误、有问题而仔细的检查。好，那么 inspect 后面加上名词字尾 I O N， 就会得到我们课文单词 inspection。表示检查检阅。好，那边顺便补充几个有相同字根的单字，像第一个 prospect， 它的字首 p r o 表示向前 ，spect 这个字根有看、看见、查看的意思，所以当我们向前看、看向远方，是不是会看到景色？所以 prospect 它有景象、景色或是视野的意思。尤其是指那种从高处看到的景色。好，还有像我们中文说向前看，是不是有那种抽象的含义，可以表达说前途啊、前景或是展望的成功机会之类的？好，那么第二个补充的是 suspect， s u s p e c t。那它的字首 s u s 表示在下方 ，s u s 它是来自 sub， 那么后面只是因为接了 s 开头的字根，所以才拼作 s u s。而字根 spect 它表示观看，在底下偷偷观察，那就表示不信任哦。所以这个字当形容词表示可疑的、不可信的；当动词表示怀疑、猜疑；那么当名词表示嫌疑犯。可是特别注意一下发音哦，就是它当形容词或名词的时候是。念作 suspect， 那么当动词是念作 suspect。好，再来看第三个补充的单字是 expect， 它是由字首 e x 表示向外和 spect 组合而成。那只是因为 e x 的尾音 x， 它的发音发生这种同化现象，所以 spect 摆在 e x 后面只剩下 p e c t 了。同学们可以试着想，那种电影小说里面情节啊，女主角从窗户向外看，是不是心中充满了期待，期待另一半的到来？用这种方式，也许可以联想到 expect， 它有期待、期望或是预期的意思。好，那么以上今天重点整理，我们回顾今天的单词吧。Colonel, the colonel ordered the soldiers to return to their base. Declare. She declared that she was right and refused to continue the discussion. Obstacle: lack of experience is often a major obstacle to finding a job. Growl: we were terrified when we heard the growl of a bear while camping in the woods. Inspection: the restaurant did not pass its annual health inspection and had to close down. Confess: I have to confess that I know nothing about computers. Okay, everyone. With that, today's article is now complete. But as always, we sure hope that you guys have enjoyed reading along with us. Anyways, I'm Jeff. I am Roger. See, See you next time. time.